Live. I'm your host, Monique Vander Hayden. Tonight, we're going to be taking through all the questions that you've sent through on the text line about everything that's just unfolded down at Adelaide Oval. Hawthorne has stamped themselves as real finals threats in a 66 point win over the Adelaide Crows. But we're going to head straight down into the rooms tonight where we'll hear from Nathan Van Berlo. So, VB, you've just caught up with the midfields. Can you ask us what the meshes watch? Yeah, uh, obviously, it's. Um yeah, pretty raw at the moment for the players. Um, our second half was, was nowhere near uh, what we expected or what we wanted out of the game. Um, so, yeah, we, we touched off on some of our transition work and they were, they were, I guess our stoppage work was was OK. That was, that was at the level enough to give us some supply, but then our ability to defend off any clearance win or off any transition in our front half was... Um, was nowhere near it, so we'll have to have a good look at, at what that looks like for us and um, butter up pretty quick. And there's so much youth in there. Do you think it comes down to mindset or it's just the way that they're pressing the ball? Yeah, we, we showed some, um, some real positive edits at, at half-time of what we did really well in the first half, which was our ability to, to, to press out and, and press the game and, and get the looks we were after. Um, and, yeah, we fell away late in that second quarter, which uh, resulted in, I think, as a 15-point deficit at half-time. Um, so, yeah, first half we were largely pretty proud of and pretty happy with. But, yeah, that second half, um, yeah, just just didn't, didn't compete at the level we needed. Obviously coming off a really impressive win last week and the youth over the past months really taken its turn. And um, Is that a positive? Oh, look, we're getting some great exposure into some of our young guys at the moment. Um, you know, Dan Curtin gets a look around the footy tonight. I thought he showed some, some positive enough signs, um, did some good things for us. You know, Zach Taylor um, is a sign of the future for us and what he's been able to bring. And even Sam Berry and, and Jake Saliga are really young in what they're giving around the footy. Bill Dowling, um, you know, he's only in a half a dozen games at best at the moment too. So we have been, been really young and challenged around the footy and without, without Dawes, uh, around the ball tonight obviously presents some challenges for us but no doubt in that second half we have to be better. And Geelong next week in Geelong uh, it's going to be a tough one. Gone with three tools will that be something you look at during the week? Yeah we'll have a look at um, our mix you know ahead of the ball around the ball and, and behind as well going into next week it's a six day turnaround so we'll, we'll have to lick our wounds pretty quickly and and get guys that are in form and, and going to give us, the, I guess, the four-quarter effort that we're after next week down at the Cattery because, I mean, we know that's, that's a really tough place to play footy and we're going to have to bring, bring our best to compete. And Crows fans are wondering, Matt Crouch, will he be back in the AFL or is it mandatory to play a sample game off the back of the shoulder? Yeah, again, that was, that was the plan this week. Um, Crouchy was a bit sick this morning, so I had to pull out of the sample game. Um, along with uh, Brody Smith, so yeah, we'll see how he pulls up. Um, but again, we'll assess whether you know, we think he comes in and plays AFL or he, or he goes and plays some Sanford footy, so um, we'll have that discussion on Wednesday this week. Awesome, thanks for joining me, VE. Nathan there mentioning that the pressure just wasn't there from the boys tonight and it really was a completely different game from looking at the first quarter to what we saw in the final three quarters. Hawthorne was really able to just take away Adelaide's ability to run the ball and lock the ball inside their forward 50. It was 16 tackles inside Hawks forward 50 to 5 from the Adelaide Crows but that first quarter was an amazing uh, football to watch. I really thought that they are going to take it to Hawks in those first, uh, first few minutes of the game. A team that's really been one of the most informed teams of the comp. Let's relieve some of those moments. They're getting some footy, winning some footy. They've just got to clean this kicker. Michael Annie from Laird to Walker. Big Tex with a two grabber and he lets them know about it. Visible action to me. Yeah, that's legal. Huge for Tex. Sneaks it in and the crowd. Show them the appreciation. Inside kick was fantastic. And now the long bond of Fogarty got up there. Dilt up. Unselfish. The Tex is on fire. He's got two. He chased it with his foot. Well, and talk about chance. Well, and incorrectly. So it's been a bizarre 30 seconds. And here is Ben Keys in the Ben Keys pocket. <laughs> Eddie right. will, Eddie, if Eddie's watching, he'll yeah. be upset at that one. Just needs to do a Sydney Swans here. Lines up. That didn't hit the post. <laughs> of 
turn the volume up to 11 here. This is fun. Thilto, all the big guns. Murphy, the mopper. So, Riley O'Brien, who's hit his target inside 50. Rochelle gets a free. Sicily pleads his case, but Rash stood his ground there. Hmm. Only just clipped him, but he did put some mail on it, but why not? Slips it home. And the Crows are back in front. Upper leg's fine. Rochelle to Philthorpe. This is a dangerous looking forward line, and I'm not yeah. thinking about this year, I'm thinking 12 months down the track or the start of next season. Wrestling ring. Stay there, Will, Will. For the lead, for the first time today for Adelaide. <laughs> Walker, mouth guard in the sock. Probably doesn't know that this is a small moment for him. Just thinks it's a big moment for him. Oh. Yes. And he has squeezed it in by a coat of paint. <laughs> Slim finals hopes, their mathematical finals hopes are done. So Walker's on his own out the back. You see Scrimshaw's come up. Rochelle goes long, and there you go. The filth option was the right option, and they can get the last two of the game and wallpaper over some cracks. Yeah, that was the shuffle down. So Walker sneaked out the back of Scrimshaw, came forward to try and defend, didn't make it. And a consolation prize for Riley Philthorpe to go with it. So obviously there's some plenty of learnings to take out of those final three quarters, but it's great to spend just a bit of time reliving the highlights from that fantastic first quarter from the Adelaide Crows. But we're going to spend a bit of time looking through some of the questions that you've sent through on the text line. We've got one here from Lucy. I thought Tex was moving a lot better today. And of course, Tex has returned after a significant stint on the sidelines nursing a back injury. And I think you're spot on, Lucy. He looked really great tonight. Three goals from him. The disappointing things, we probably just weren't able to get the ball down to him enough. It was only 41 inside 50s for Adelaide today to 58 for the Hawks and with such big body forwards with Tex Walker, Riley Thiel for Fogarty down there as well who's uh, replacing Jordan Dawson as skipper today uh, we had a great chance to outbody uh, the smaller Hawks defenders but unfortunately we just weren't out to get the ball down there enough for them so there'll be some things to work on later in the week before we head to Geelong uh, Stacey, I like how Lockie Scholl is going, yeah, I think you're spot on, I think the younger boys did struggle a little bit more tonight, but Lockie Scholl is one of those players who was able to step up today. So he pulled out with 29 disposals, six tackles and seven marks. So arguably the best on field today. And uh, he wasn't alone. We had Jake Saligo had another fantastic game from him. Obviously had a fantastic start to the, uh, the season. It's quite often more recent weeks, but he had 30 disposals today and four tackles as well. Um, but Paul there as well asking Jake Saligo had a crack. Yeah, he had a fantastic game. And it's great to see some of those younger players uh, stepping up when uh, the team is struggling. Um, one of those players as well would be uh, Billy Dowling, and we're going to head to him now. He's been nice enough to have a chat with us after the game. You've just come out of a mids meeting. What was the message? Yeah, obviously pretty disappointing. Um, that first quarter and a half started obviously pretty strong. Our contest was good, but um, yeah, I think we just dropped off in our intensity and contest in that um, last half, especially. And I don't know, it's tough because, you know, you start so well and we're younger with good energy and to see, you know, that energy fall is probably the most annoying thing, but yeah, there's plenty to learn from. We'll bounce back. You talk about that first quarter. I felt like the pressure was really on and the mids were up a hand. How can you fix that? What can you change? Is it, is it the mindset? Yeah, it's a bit of mindset, a bit of um, just fundamentals, really. I think we missed a few skill errors that we'd normally hit, and you know they were able to capitalise credit to them. They were obviously very impressive, and they took up another notch, um, and we just couldn't take it with them. So um, we'll learn from it, and we'll bounce back. Can you talk about Hawthorne? What makes them so hard to play against? Yeah, I think they're just a ruthless side, like you saw. Um, they never sort of let it go. Even when we were taking it to them, they always just stayed with us and then you know, really took it to another level, um, as I said. So credit to them. They were obviously impressive today and yeah, probably a bad team one, um, fortunately. And over the past month, I feel like you've been finding yourself in some form and playing some good AFL footy. What's been the best part of just being able to have continuity amongst your game? 
Yeah, definitely just learning. Um, I mean, playing a variety of roles, half forward um, and wing and stuff like that. It's awesome to get that experience and that in AFL intensity into here. And I think, you know, each week there's been something to build on coming into the next game. So it's been awesome for me. I love my chances and the boys have been great. And the likes of Bondi and Dan Curtin coming into the midfield, have you, how impressed have you been with him over, I guess, in Sample to come back into the team? Yeah, those boys have just been very consistent. Um, obviously, as a young guy, I can probably have those ups and downs throughout the year. But for those boys, just to be consistent week in, week out. And, you know, Bondi's doing his job, whether it's forward, mid, anywhere it is. So um, he's been impressive. And, I mean, there's plenty of youngsters playing good footy now. So it's awesome. We're all good mates. So plenty to build on. And Geelong next week at Geelong, uh, obviously a tough challenge up and about. What can you do through the week to, I guess, tighten this after an impressive win last week? Yeah, definitely just come back to who we are and our, our identity. And um, that goes firstly to contest and how we seek the game. So, um, you know, we probably got away from that in the second half, but take it right back to the fundamentals and how we want to play. And like I said, we'll hopefully be right around the mark next week. Awesome. Thanks, Bill. Billy there mentioning the Geelong game next week, which will be a huge challenge. The last time Adelaide's one down in Geelong was 2003. So uh, we'll be giving them a little bit of confidence, hopefully heading into next week. But it will be a huge challenge against Geelong, who's found a lot of form in the last couple of weeks as well. But it wasn't just the AFL boys who did play today. We did have the Sample boys out there today, I guess uh, the, the Eagles. And they walked away with a nine-point win. So that's left them at seventh place on the ladder. So finals are still within reach for the Sample boys. And one guy that had a fantastic game today was Worrell, obviously coming back into AFL football after that, um, that hand injury earlier in the year. Question here from Tony. Will Josh Worrell be back next week? Well, he put in a good contest today. So he, I think he'll definitely be getting a look in. He'll be in conversations, that for sure. He had 30 disposals today, best on ground for the Sandford boys. So great to see him get back out there and be in such great form immediately getting back out into footy. But one player that was missing was Matt Crouch. So we don't need to worry. He was meant to be out there today but he's just come down with a little bit of illness Brody Smith was also sick as well but he should be all good to go um, for next week to play a bit of football as well but now we're going to head to a bit of a chat we had with Ben Keys earlier in the week so he's been in fantastic form um, especially last week got a fantastic performance for him and he managed to pull out an amazing goal tonight let's have a listen to what he's had to say to the Crow Show earlier this week <laughs> Keys has five. What a turn that is from a pressure forward. Just with that role, sometimes it falls your way, um, sometimes it doesn't. So I've just been trying to be balanced in, in my role all year and, and knowing that, yeah, some games you get the opportunities, um, some games are a bit more quiet and you might only get, you know, one or two looks at it. So, yeah, it just fell my way. I've just been um, playing the role as, as I have been doing and um, and then, yeah, be, be, being asked to go on ball in the last quarter as well got me around the footy a bit as well. So um, all those factors played in it. Kai gives it up. Keys. What is happening? I play half forward, so one of the, the higher forwards that gets up and down the ground. So, um, yeah, guys like um, Josh Rochelle, Lockie Murphy, um, we roll through that that role, Braden Cook as well. So, um, yeah, it's 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 a it's a tough one. It, you can get caught in between some days, and, and other days it, it falls falls your way. And um, yeah, it involves a lot of running, um, a lot of defensive pressure, a lot of tackling, um, chasing, things like that. So some of the stuff that doesn't really go um, noticed at times. But yeah, um, if you're lucky enough and the, and everyone's playing their role, the ball can fall your way. <laughs> I started playing forward last year. Now I've had a whole pre-season, uh, a whole season to have a crack at it. So I know what I'm doing now and I've been really well coached. I've um, been helped out by some awesome performances from some forwards as well. So um, I could go through all of them, but um, guys like Darcy Fogarty, um, Elliot Himmelberg are so crucial in the contest and bringing the ball to ground. Versatility is really important in today's game. Um, as you saw with the game on Friday, the amount of injuries we had, um, guys were playing all sorts of different roles. Um, young guys, experienced guys, we all had to do um, something different to what we're used to. So yeah, growing that versatility um, you know, when given a role is really important, I think. So definitely accepting that, um, embracing it and making sure you learn as much as you can and, and yeah, get to work on it because uh, yeah, you never know when you might be called upon to, to play a different role in the field and you want to be able to do that as a player, you want to be able to do all those roles and, and do it effectively. Yeah, just keeping everyone balanced, um, not riding the highs and lows too much and just keeping the energy up um, around training, around the facility, um, just trying to keep everyone you know, optimistic. Um, you know, we're, we're a very young, inexperienced team. We've got some guys that are playing um, incredible footy at the moment that, are, that have come up from the sample. So just really backing them in, um, you know, no matter the result, making sure they keep their heads up, stay positive um, because they're going to be so important for us um, going to the future and all those things are really important in the leadership space. All the way to the back, good race, off 
off the ground, keys. No way. <laughs> no way. That equals a career high for Ben Keys. It was a fantastic win. It's probably one of the best wins I've been a part of uh, since I got to the club. Uh, I think because the way some of the younger guys stood up, I think, and the circumstances around losing a few uh, players to injury, more experienced players. Um, some of the young guys that we had in were, were absolutely brilliant. Guys only playing their second, third game. So um, it was a fantastic win. And yeah, as I said, definitely one of the best I've been a part of. Great spending a bit of time hearing, um, hearing from Keezy. What a fantastic story he's had coming all the way from the Brisbane Lions down to the Adelaide Crows. And he's probably one of the best stories to come out of this season as well. And he'll definitely be in the running for the club champ later this year as well. And those are some of the amazing packages you can see in the Crows show. So tune into that if you want to see a few more things like that. But that's about all the time we'll have for Crows Live tonight. One thing to keep an eye out for early this week is that we will be announcing the AFLW captain for this season which is quickly approaching. Of course, they'll be replacing Chelsea Randall as skipper for the AFLW side. So some very big shoes to fill there. But of course, don't forget to tune in to support the boys down in Geelong next week. And we'll be back for the Bulldogs in two weeks' time. Thanks for your company. Were you there to see the sweat? Were you there to hear the rice? Are you there to taste the victory? Were you there to feel the pride? Together, we're stronger. Be there in 2024.